Hey guys, and welcome back to Mike's 4x4 Garage. Today, we're gonna be building a rear tire carrier bumper for the Tacoma. It's gotta be cheap, strong, good looking, all of those things. And since we're doing it ourselves, uh, it's gonna be hard to meet any of those, but I hope you enjoy the video and I'll see you at the end. Okay, so let's dive right into it. I've got a design figured out and I'm gonna show you what we got planned here. As with every design here, it's gonna be simple. Us do it yourself, guys. We don't have a huge garage, so we need to have simple designs. So basically, I wanna have a hitch on the rear bumper, two shackle recovery points on each side. The tire carrier is gonna be offset to the right. We're gonna get a hinge here, some locks to keep it so it can lock closed. I'm not talking about like a um, security lock, but more like just a lock that'll make sure it doesn't rattle around. So I'm actually stealing a lot of the cues for the bumper for the Tacoma off of this one. This is my Filthy Addictions Off-Road Cherokee bumper, and I like the design, pretty much everything. This was made in a really good shop though, so I'm gonna make it a lot simpler than this. Some things to look at are, these are the locking pins I'm talking about. Keeps the bumper situated where it needs to be. We're gonna use these latches on the Tacoma. And of course we have our hinge on this side. Don't worry about how smashed up the Jeep is. So you can see here, I got a whole bunch of steel and parts. I'm gonna go over that in a second here. But I wanna show you guys, this is pretty much exactly what I spent. I kind of rounded up on this, but right around $300 for all of these parts and this is what I ended up with. This steel I bought from a steel yard and their REM pieces, which are basically their leftovers. So I kind of just had to get stuff that was a little bit longer and I might've paid a little bit more. But the steel itself for these three pieces was $150, 150. And let's go through some of these other parts. So here are shackle tabs. They're completely thick steel. They're, um, these are really beefy and heavy. So I'll have no problem plan is to weld these through the back side and uh yeah those would be good recovery points we got our hitch so we can throw bike racks on small trailers and stuff like that and now this is the hinge kit this side is going to weld down into the bumper and the tire carrier will be able to pivot on this we've got some bearings that go with it and uh it should be interesting to see how this was this is like about 50 bucks for the whole kit got some latches and the plungers to lock it open or closed. So yeah, $300 for all of that stuff. I think it was a pretty good deal. Time will tell on that, but um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Oh, and I bought another 6L. You guys know how much I love my unreliable diesels. I got another one. All right, so I think the most important part about building a rear bumper, and especially one that's a tire carrier that's gonna have a good amount of weight on it with that spare, you wanna have a very, very solid mounting point. So we're on the back of the Tacoma here and um, I'm just gonna say it's not very confidence inspiring back here. The last owner did some weird stuff with this frame. It's bent up, it had this big weird custom hitch on it when I bought it. Some things are just not pretty back here. So I'm trying to think about how I can do a very strong rear cross member for the back and I think I've got the right idea. So my plan is to have side plates here with reliefs cut into them so I can weld that to the frame. And in between the two plates on either side, I'm gonna have a piece of tube run across and add some more rigidity back here because this is our last cross member on the frame and I'd like to have one as far back as possible for that rear bumper to have more uh, strength side to side. Oh, and check this out. This is my new toy. I just got this thing off Amazon. It was like 180 bucks, it's a little plasma cutter. I'm so stoked about this. You guys don't even understand. For years, I've been using an angle grinder and it's the worst tool when you're trying to cut a lot of steel out. <laughs> So awesome, so much faster than an angle grinder. All right, so to weld those plates on, I have to lift the bed up to get to the top of the plates. So there's six bolts here, they're 18 millimeters. I'm just gonna pop them out, boom, and we'll have enough space there. So 
I made two of these and uh, you can see the plasma cutter isn't the cleanest cut here if you don't have a straight line. Like these, I was holding it against a straight edge, it's good. But I was kind of just free handing these. It looks goofy. This is gonna be so that it can weld to the frame and has a little bit more strength in the middle. It's not just the outsides. It's also the inside here. This is all gonna get filled up with weld. All right, so this plate is all in place. It's where I want it. It's time to weld this thing up. All right, so both of these plates are tacked in place. Now I'm gonna make that tube that's gonna go in the middle here. Picking up what I'm putting down yet? <laughs> that was a lot of welding, but it is zapped in place and some paint will make it look a lot prettier. But that's our mounting bracket. That's our frame reinforcement. The more I look at this bar, the less it makes sense to me. My idea was this is gonna add extra support, but the bumper being mounted here also does that. So it's kind of redundant, whatever. I guess we can start now on just the actual bumper itself. I just made these. These are gonna be our mounting plates that go onto the bumper. It's going to, we're just gonna put the bumper up to it and weld it on and that'll be perfectly in place. It's about as simple as it gets, just two, bump, two, uh, two bolts and that's more than enough to hold that bumper on. The Jeep has the same thing for the winch bumper. That thing has been ripped up and pulled and everything. And it's just two 5 8 bolts, so I think that's going to be more than strong enough for a tire carrier. Alright, that looks good. Let's burn it in. So these plates are exactly where they need to be now, and uh, I'm going to add some triangles here. Add some triangles so that it has a little bit more rigidity to it and you don't have to worry about this bending. All right, look at that. Fresh off the press. Those are looking really good, really nice looking welds. All right, so we're gonna move on to getting the hinge kit mounted. But basically what we're gonna do, this is gonna be our passenger side of the truck. We're gonna drill a hole in the steel, then we'll just weld it in place. We're gonna cut that and then weld the bottom. Yeah, so we have to make sure that this is centered. Looks pretty good, eyeballing it. make this bumper look a little bit more aggressive, not just a piece of steel. It's gonna be an angled piece of steel. So I'm gonna cut it and then we'll be able to plate it and uh, weld the whole bottom together. It's welded on the bottom, supported. It's got that nice angle to it. All right, the driver's side is welded up too. So now we can start doing some more fun stuff. We're gonna mount all the little stuff onto the bumper now. So we'll start with this. Basically just have to find the center and uh, cut a big old hole with the plasma cutter and weld her in. We'll do the same thing with these shackle mounts wherever they might go. Somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. All right, you can see our shackle mounts here. Hitch, shackle mount, and that's mirrored on both sides. So I think now we could just cut it out with the plasma cutter. And uh, I don't know, I think that'll work. I'm just gonna cut the both sides out and then slide the pieces through and weld them in. We're gonna find out together. Okay, all the holes are cut out. See right through this thing. And now we can just weld it all back together. Not usually one to toot my own horn, but those welds look pretty good. I'm getting better at it. I need a pay raise. All right, this is finally coming together and looking like a legitimate bumper. So. 
I let it cool down. I think it's now time to build up the tire carrier assembly. So yeah, this is gonna be our spindle. This is where we're gonna start our mount from. And all this stuff, I'm really just shooting from the hip for all this um, and trying not to do something that becomes a problem for future me. All right, here's what we've got. This is a two by two piece of steel and it is notched on our tire carrier bearing. I've got two 3 16 pieces of steel there to space it out. Give this a little this gap here and I got the same thing on this side that's gonna hold it. And I think now I can just weld this. The only thing I'm thinking that might become a problem is I'm wondering if the sag from the weight of the tire is gonna influence on that joint and make it drag. What not, I don't know. I can't really see the future, so that rhymed. And hopefully none of this bites me in the ass later. All right, small update. Here is the locking mechanisms. These are gonna be what keeps the tire carrier from swinging open and killing somebody to going down the road. Um, basically, you have this one, right? This is gonna be your main pull catch release. And then this is basically, the only point of this thing is just to tighten down the assembly, keep it from jiggling around. Uh, basically, the way to your opening this is going to be pulling this lever and pulling up on that. It's the exact same as the Filthy Addictions off-road one on my Cherokee. It works awesome, keeps it nice and tight. I'm going to link all this stuff in the description so you could just quick buy everything in this project except for the steel. So now we're ready to start building the hoop assembly that the tire is going to mount to. We're going to need to bend this piece of steel, which I'm pretty terrible with bending steel. I have a good bender, a decent bender, but I don't know how to use it right. That's how I want the tire to sit, offset to the right. That's the height that I want, give or take. And then basically I'm just taking my tube that we just bent, ugh, putting it up here, and we're eyeballing it to see how it lines up with the back of that wheel. And that is looking about dead on for where I want it. I've been cutting away at the ends here to get it to be the height that I want. But yeah, this looks pretty good. Um, and I'm gonna just weld this in. All right, that's all zapped in. Uh, I will admit, <laughs> this weld right here defeated me. I had way too big of a gap. Uh, so I kinda had to gum it on there. But besides that, man, it looks like it's ready to go. I'm at the local steel yard where you can get a bunch of scrap and stuff, and I don't think you're allowed to record here, but this place is pretty awesome. Let me show you around. Need some pulleys? This is just one of those places where they have a little bit of everything. Old radiator. A whole bunch of valves. This is what I'm looking for right here. Now, these are just cutouts but we're going to use this as a wheel mounting surface for our wheel and there's a bunch of them here i wanted one that was eight inches i found this one that's 20 bucks for that are you kidding me Let's see if i can find anything cheaper but all right so we're back from the parts store um steel yard i got this i basically bought two of the 3 16 plates and just weld them together because that was like $4 cheaper. So now it's 3 8 thick instead of quarter. So it's a little bit thicker. And basically, I'm gonna take that piece of steel we found, center it up, weld it. We'll have to drill the holes in that for the lug nut studs. Okay, so attaching this piece is really important. We want this plate to be 90 degrees in or out, right? We want it to be straight up and down with the rest of the carrier. And I pretty much got that dead on there. All right, uh, you'll notice the tire is on the tire carrier. Ran into a little problem and I'm glad I caught it before I did something bad here. 
So my original idea was to run this pipe. You see, I got it notched already. I was gonna run this pipe right to the middle of this arm to have a bunch of support and then run it back to the main carrier. And that would have been great and all, except for the fact that it would have hit the tire. What I'm thinking now, because I can't run this and still fit it on there, I'm going to put this bar right up to there and then down to the carrier itself. Then I'll run a, uh, a triangle, basically. Run a big old gusset that'll connect the two and uh, any force from this will be distributed down to this piece. But I'm happy that I actually mounted this tire up and double checked. That's how you catch yourself from doing dumb stuff. All right, this paint came out okay. There's some bubbles in it, but whatever. It's gonna be getting smashed up and beaten up anyway, so it's ready to get installed. Let's throw it on the truck. All right, it's all finished. I'm really happy with it. Let me show you how it came out. All right, so here is the finished product and it's very minimalistic. It is simple, but I think that it fits the truck really well. It's pretty much everything that I was looking for. No, it's not a rock crawler bumper. I'm sure some people will say, why didn't you cut these corners? I wanted to leave those. I like the look of them and the truck's not gonna be going anything insane where I'm gonna worry about smashing those up anyway. So I'm happy I kept them. The fitment is pretty good. I'm not gonna to lie to you guys though, the rear bumper did have a couple little issues when I was mounting it up as with any project would. Uh, it was a little bit too close as in it was actually touching the tailgate here. You can see it's about half an inch there maybe right now. But yeah, it was right against the tailgate. I went on the bumper brackets here and I ovaled them about a half an inch and that gave us just a little bit of adjustability to be able to move it back and forth, which I think was a great idea. But yeah, it's very tight, fits very, very close to the truck, which is what I was looking for. Barely any play in this, like I'm really pushing on this thing and it is strong as hell. For the second time, I didn't let the paint dry enough and I got some blemishes in it. Little stuff, little stuff. It all opens up really smoothly. This uh, carrier bearing is really good. Tailgate opens fine. Put it up there. Pin drops in place. So I'm stoked about how this came out. It's pretty much exactly what I wanted and it was right around 350 bucks. So it was a lot cheaper. Uh, assuming that we don't count for any of my time that I put into this, which was a lot. It was like three full days of fabrication. I know some people could probably do that a lot faster, but I am, well, I'm not that great. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments. I'm gonna drop a description and like uh, links to everything that I bought to build this in the description. So check that out. And uh, I think it's time for me to go take this thing to do some four wheeling. That's gonna be the next few videos is actually taking this thing wheeling and enjoying it. Start to reap some of those uh, rewards of all this hard work. As always, check out the Instagram, Mike's 4x4 Garage. See me there, I post more often. And uh, like and comment and uh, subscribe. Anyway, in the meantime, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.